Welcome to a Pack of Pushers Demo Bites. We've got sponsor Nokia with us today, and I've got Erwin James. And Erwin, you're going to show us how to talk to a router in plain language using artificial intelligence. So set us up for this, man. What's going on? That's right. So with us, Erlinix, we've uh, you know we've been touting our extensibility and the ability to run applications locally on your switches and your routers. Uh, and so we decided this year that with the whole hype around uh, OpenAI and, and ChatGPT, that we would try and build an application and a, a little AI system to run alongside you in the CLI to help you navigate SR Linux. Cool. I want to see it. Show me the CLI, man. Let's do it. So here we are. We're in the uh, SR Linux uh, CLI. Uh, I've already installed the application for the sake of time of the demo. Um, but as you can see, if I just start typing, you know, ask AI, I have this new CLI prompt. And that's just, you know, all I did was install an RPM and Integrated into my CLI, I have this little little Ask AI assistant to help me navigate to SR Linux. So this is installed right. This is this regular SR Linux network operating system. I'm on I'm on a switch of some kind. I, I assume, and now we've got AI that's been uh, been added to the mix. So normally I do what show commands and that kind of thing. Yeah, you would do show commands or info from state and you know those types of commands okay. to, to get uh, to get the information you need. So one thing that we can do with this is, you know, probably the primary use case for it is, you know, a documentation search, right? So as you're navigating SR Linux, potentially you're, you know, going into BGP, uh, you know, there's a bunch of configuration parameters and potentially you're, you're new to BGP or potentially you're new to SR Linux, which is, uh, you know, quite likely. And then you can go to uh, transport, you know, I'm navigating around, I'm not sure exactly what everything does, uh, but I see this particular property. Uh, maybe I want to get some information about it. So, you know, I would have historically switched back to my documentation, gone through and looked at my documentation, but now I have my little AI assistant. So I can ask the AI assistant, um, can you explain what TCP MSS does? Okay, so now what it's going to do is it's going to try and answer the question, obviously, about TCP MSS. But what's really important to highlight here is that it's not just answering the question based on its knowledge through, you know, scraping the internet, but it actually is contextualizing it within uh, SR Linux specifically. So all the, the configuration parameters you're getting here, the answer is specific uh, to SR Linux. And it's so specific to SR Linux that you can actually keep going and ask it to give, provide you with uh, potentially configuration examples of, of, of how to configure it. Uh, okay, so 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 Nokia has trained this particular Ask AI on your body of documentation, and which is going to include configurations and so on? That's right. Yeah. So what we do is we use something called in-context learning. So when you ask it a question, it's actually doing a firstly in the application, a local lookup to see where in the documentation would it potentially find an answer to the question. So that's the first step. And then it basically takes the section of documentation, which it thinks is most likely to answer the question. Um, and it uses that as context to send to your, you know, your LLM, whether it be open AI or other to try and answer the question. So in this particular case, it found, you know, a section on BGP, TCP, MSS, close enough. Uh, in the documentation, sends it all along, and now it's able to answer the question. Is it sending a text summary of what was in that doc, or is it sending verbatim what was in the documentation? It will send uh, verbatim the sections it thinks is most likely to be able to help answer the question. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was saying you can you can ask it to uh, potentially help you with a configuration. So I could ask it here, yeah. say, can you uh, prove, uh, or I can say, how do you configure it? So it knows we've been talking about TCP MSS. So we're going to, we're, that's what you must be asking me about. Okay, cool. Exactly. So it follows the context, right? So I have a, a, a chat session. And so now anything I ask it is knows about what I previously asked and it's, it's contextualizing and keeping that context along as I go through and ask a questions. And so I could dig deeper, right? Like just like you would chat GPT, you can refine your questions, you can prod in a specific area and it knows about everything you asked before. So it's, it's, it's keeping that context. Uh, or what you can do is you can ask it to uh, create a new chat, right? So if I do something like this, now it's lost its history. Now we're talking about a new topic potentially. Maybe I'm switching from okay. BGP, I'm switching potentially to ACLs. And so now I wanted to forget about BGP and really contextualize its answers around the topic that I'm really focused on. Before we forget about BGP, the JSON and CLI commands that it that it sent out, how accurate are those? This is a challenge I've had just playing with chat GPT generically, where the configurations it might send me are eh, hit or miss, mostly miss. Is this really good code? Yeah, it's it's pretty good, I must say. What you're looking at here is 100 percent accurate. Now, this is this is a pretty simplistic configuration example. We're talking about a single param parameter to configure. However, um, it is pretty good. Like in, in my using it and, and testing it and playing with it. 
generally speaking, it's good. You may have to refine your question or potentially, like I said, you know, guide it in the correct direction if it gets the, the one property wrong. Uh, but it's, it's, it's impressively good. I, I've used it enough to know that I can, I, I would feel confident uh, copy pasting a lot of these configurations in my lab to test them out and see if they work as I expect them to. Oh, very cool. You know, Erwin, I guess that makes sense because you trained this on Nokia documentation, which if that includes configuration examples, then you know you've got uh, a golden configuration to start from. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. So when we provide the context, we provide configuration examples from the documentation, and it's able to piece it together uh, to give you uh, to give you an accurate response. So one other thing that's pretty interesting um, about it is, you know, obviously we can do the searching of the documentation, uh, but another thing is it actually uh, understands the configuration that's running on the system. So I can actually ask it questions about the running configuration of the system. Um, uh, okay, so it's it is system aware where it's running. It actually knows things about this switch itself. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, um, this is cool. So I I can ask it questions like, for instance, um, you know, is SSH allowed in uh, the CPM filters. Now, CPM filters for us is uh, our management filters. You usually put on your management port. Um, and we typically have large lists of ACLs or management ACLs. And uh, if you want to just get a quick answer as to whether a port is allowed, now I happen to know it was because I'm SSH into device, but uh, you know, I've, I've, I've used the word SSH instead of port 22 and, and it's gone and figured out that indeed I do have uh, two entries in my IPv4 CPM filters that allow TCP in and, and TCP out. On port twenty. Show me so show me entry sixty then. Make me a believer. Sure. All right. Uh CPM filter, IPv4 filter, entry. Let's go with 60. So yeah. sure enough, this is the actual configuration. And uh yeah, so it's able to look at it, and which it, is uh Okay. Somehow it knew that SSH was TCP twenty two as well. You didn't so there's some kind of it's got a a port map lexicon in there somehow as well. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And then for that, we rely on the LLMs, right? The LLMs are pretty good at figuring out, you know, this correlation of ports to, to, to natural language or to, uh, to, to words. And, and so we don't, we don't have to do much with that, but it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty smart at figuring it out. So that, okay. So right there, we just parsed a local configuration paragraph. Can, can it tell me things about device, uh, device state? Like if I want to know, are there any ports that are throwing errors, something like that? Yeah, sure. So you could ask it here. Uh, are there any discarded packets on the interfaces? So what it's doing here, as you said, is it's not just looking at configuration, it's, it's literally looking at the state of the system. Um, and now it's gone through all my interfaces and tried to figure out if there are any discarded packets. And sure enough, it's telling me, you know, Ethernet 1 has eight discarded packets and a management interface, maybe a bit more important, has 28 discarded packets, right? Yeah. And then this extends to beyond just, you know, interface packets. You can actually ask it to kind of summarize health, summarize, you know, uh, yeah, like health of a system, for instance. So if I, I'll clear my screen and I'll, I'll, I'll create a new context. So this, let's, let's okay. get into the world of BGP. Um, and maybe I can ask it to um, summarize the health of the BGP peers. So now it's going to try and look at all through all my BGP peers in my switch, and it's going to try and figure out if anything's right or not right, and, and summarize the information to me. You know what's interesting about that is you didn't you phrased it summarize the health, which is truly natural language the way a human would ask it. You didn't have to put specific technical jargon in to to pull this information, and and now we see one peer that's that's in an active state, as in not healthy. It's active. It should be established. Uh, Correct. So so interesting we found somebody that's broken yeah and just like uh, you can keep going right so if you're new to bgp and you're not really sure why that would be an active state you can actually keep asking a question so i could say you know are there any errors on the downed peer so again it's keeping that context it knows which one is down because i just asked it and now it's mm -hmm. going to focus on on that on that bgp peer and it's going to see if there's any additional um errors and sure enough it's telling me here that there was an error message, a subcode bad PRES, and I happen to know that's true because I'm the one that caused the issue before the uh, before the demo. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I can actually go and and fix it, and I can show you that it's really looking at state of the system. So if I go, this is my my peer, obviously that I'm I'm going to fix my problem that I broke earlier. So I fixed okay, my so bad yeah, AS. Yeah, mismatched AS. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and if I come back here, I can ask it: Is the BGP a peer problem? fixed ah that's cool because it still knows the context 
Yeah, and hopefully, and there you go. So now it's, it appears to be fixed. The session is now established, uh, and it tells me that uh, it was 13 seconds ago, which lines up with the fact that I just brought the, the peer session back up. So it's really truly looking at the state, and you know you can keep asking questions and ask it to, you know, provide a configuration example potentially to fix it. You know, the configuration example I provided earlier. Uh, if I wasn't sure how to fix the BGPAS, I could say, you know, how do you provide a BGPAS, and it would provide me the configuration example to do so. There's so much going on here, Erwin. The, the 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 context of the plane. You know, can you summarize the health? Are there any downed peers? And it understands what downed means and what health means, and is the problem fixed? To to yeah. be able to provide that, I don't know how you trained the model to pull that off with that that language and and verbiage. But that is very cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. It's 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 pretty awesome. Um. One last thing that I kind of wanted to show you guys was the fact that you know the application. You know, we've looked at configuration. We've looked at Docs search, we've looked at state of the system, but the application itself running on the switch is actually contextually aware, right? So as I navigate through the CLI tree myself, it's actually aware of where I am in the CLI tree and it answers questions based on the actual CLI context, not just a general context that I'm asking it. So for example, um, if I, again, we'll start a new chat, clear the history. Um, if I navigate to the default network instance, uh, I can now ask a question specific to this network instance. So I could say something along the lines of, uh, is prefix you know, 172.18.02 uh, in the route table? If not, list uh, other prefixes. So what it's doing here is it's going to look at the route table in this very specific network instance. And sure enough, it's telling me that this prefix is in the route table. Uh, gives me a little bit of information. It's a slash 31. Um, it's decided to list the rest of the prefixes as well. Uh, but if I switch context, right, in the CLI, so if I now jump to the uh, the management network instance, so completely different route table, different network instance, and I'm just going to press up and ask it the identical question, nothing's changed. And so now it's aware of the fact that I'm navigating the network instance management, uh, and uh, it's now telling me that it's not in the route table, because sure enough, I know that 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 prefix happens to be in the default network instance, and it's not found in the management network instance. Very cool. So again, it, just understanding I'm in this context, I have to query these particular route tables to be able to answer this question correctly is, uh, again, the kind of inference you want it to make. You want it to make that that assumption and give you the answer you're expecting without you having to overqualify everything to death, like you often have to do with a show command, all depending on how they're structured. But that is yeah. uh, very powerful. Well, so who's the who's the consumer of the, uh, the, the Ask AI? Is it meant for network engineers, Erwin? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're probably targeting this to people who are new to SR Linux. You know, as we do have the container that's available to download freely, uh, the app will be allowed uh, will be available to download freely as well. Um, it really helps as a great learning tool. So, as we saw the documentation search, if you're not familiar with how to get those show commands, you're not a power user of SR Linux yet. Um, this really helps you get started. Um, if you're an experienced user, but you're not familiar with a particular protocol or a particular knob, or you're not sure what the show command is anymore because you've switched context yourself many times, uh, you can ask it. And uh, it's just there waiting for you to uh, to ask it questions and hopefully provide you with some assistance. Now, I know uh, Nokia is big on providing network operating system for lab environments and that kind of stuff. So if I want to download SR Linux and use it in my lab, where do I go to do that? Yeah, you can go to uh, learn.srlinux.dev and you can uh, download our freely available container, run it on Container Lab, uh, and also download this application for you to play with. Ah, this application is free as well? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, thanks for the demo, Erwin. This has been awesome and mind-expanding. It's nice to see AI finally getting real and being useful. Yeah, no problem. Glad you enjoyed it.